YouTube channel is not any good, but he's a nice guy. I'm sorry, Mr. Bolton. I'm sorry about that. Right, here we go. Hello, my lovelies. What a pleasure to see you. Oh, should we go to reach out with? Um, shall we, shall we, shall we? My loves. Well, it is Monday, and as most of you will know only too well, Monday is my day to head off to the north and have a filming day with Captain Mustard at Project Nigel AQ. That was supposed to be Project Nigel HQ, although he's calling it 649 million different things at the moment, so I think I can be forgiven that little slip. Anyway, I'm not going today, and the reason I'm not going today is I can't afford to, unfortunately. It's the last week of the month. Um, it's getting a bit colder, the heating's been on, and the truth is that I live day to day absolutely on a shoestring. One of my particular talents is that whatever means you give me, I will live beyond them. And whilst it might look a bit flash having a fleet of six cars, albeit obviously incredibly cheap cars, um, I am, I'm not joking when I say that I'm always skinned. And this week I am so desperately, desperately skint that I can't go and film, unfortunately. Um, but there you are. Um, that's the way things are. Not much you can do. However, a doctor, duct and improvise. Um, I have got a little bit of petrol in Stigbert von Thundercock here. Nowhere near enough the petrol tank is worth that I would need to get up to PNHQ, but enough to have a little trip, oh that's rather nice, but enough to have a little trip out and turn his wheels over and of course take you with me. So where are we going? Good question. Well, we're going on a little trip down recent memory lane and it's going to be a little bit bittersweet reasons that will probably become clear. Still, what a pleasure to be out in Stigbert von Thundercup, who, as you know, is my MG ZT190 Plus. The 190 being the 2.5 K-series V6, the KV6. Super engine, fabulous car. Look at the colours, aren't they gorgeous? This is Basley. The hotel on the left is where I had my wedding reception. I think I've told you before, we got married at Fisher's, which is just over to the right because it was Michelin Star. Uh, and we had lunch there, but God Almighty, that cost the national debt of Korea. Uh, which was uh, okay for friends and families, but obviously the reception, well, you, you invite millions of hangers on, don't you? And I'm bugging if I was feeding them Michelin star food. So we hoofed it down the road there for the evening, and a jolly good do it was. In fact, and this might be not interesting, um, my wedding reception was my final performance as a vocalist. 
Um, it was something I always said I'd do. I always said that if I got married, there's no way that I would pay somebody uh, or, or a group to sing to entertain when I spent God knows how many years of my life at oh, two or three weddings uh, a week or wedding receptions a week anyway. Uh, yeah, I was, well I wasn't a wedding singist, I was a vocalist, but we did used to get booked for a lot of weddings. God, I've seen some howlers. Oh, and some of the fathers of the bride speeches I've witnessed, dear God. I'll tell you, I've got a whole night full of stories about, though in fact, my whole singing days, I should do some videos about all of that because I had some fun with it. Um, not just around the UK, I travelled around Europe and uh, America and I did some really cool things including including singing at quite a large concert in Chicago duetting with somebody half famous. Certainly had a couple of number ones. I'll tell you all about that one day. But anyway, yeah. The wedding reception, that was my last performance as a vocalist and indeed my um, my first dance was me singing with a head mic. It was a good night actually. Golfists, men in weird trousers who were unaware of the invention of women, apparently. Right, my lovelies, I thought as a treat, I don't think I've done this before with you, I thought I'd bring you through Chatsworth. This is the, or these are the grounds of Chatsworth House, the seat of the Duke of Devonshire. I do have a little bit of history here, and I have been inside Chatsworth, the house, and I didn't pay, and I didn't go in the public entrance, and no, I wasn't trespassing or burgling. My ex-wife was friends with the Duchess. Now, if you ever come to Chatsworth, uh, and if you're in the area, you really should. There's a fabulous farm shop and an excellent garden centre. And of course there's the house itself. If you like nosing around the um, the gaff of knobs. Oh, sheep in the road. This is one of the hazards of driving through Chatsworth House. The animals have priority. Well, take your time, guys. No rush. <laughs> you see, even the sheep are toffs. They expect you to work around them. Droit de Seigneur and all that. quite autumnal day. Low cloud, there's been rain on and off. The rain last night was biblical, my God above. Oh, floods last night. And when I got home from work, just going from, you know where to park, right outside the, the front door of the cottage, and just going those 
two or three yards from the car to uh, to the front door. You'd think I'd been in a full-on power shower for half an hour. I was drenched. It was proper Welsh rain downpour. Oh, nice S-type. I've got a soft spot for the S-type. I've spoken before about my love and hate relationship with Jaguars. I love them, they hate me. Every single one I've owned has been a disaster. With the exception of one of the XJSs, which wasn't a disaster in terms of being a car, but I, it was kind of a disaster in that I sold it, amongst other things, to go towards paying for the wedding that I mentioned earlier. So it has disaster associated with it. I wouldn't rule out at some point Jaguars making a comeback in my doings. I do fancy, um, oh well, you know, if money was knocking around then a supercharged S-Type would be rather fabulous. Uh, and I wouldn't say no by any means to uh, an X-Type estate. Um, I would want the two and a half or three litre V6 automatic with the Randall handle as the J-Gate is known. And we join the A6. You used to be able to get a really nice sandwich from a delicatessen there. I wonder if it's still there. I think it might have been. And coming up on the right is DFS. And if you're really lucky, they'll have a sail on. I wonder if there's ever been a time where DFS didn't have a sail on. I hate that place. And I hate places like it. And I'm ashamed to say that I bought a tape, well, I mean, I say I, we, my ex-wife and I, it was her idea. She dragged me to bloody DFS. Um, and I can tell you what I was driving. I was driving my Lexus Sora 4-litre beast. Um, and the best thing about that trip to DFS was that it was a great big car park and it was empty. And I did some donuts and did about 100 quid's worth of tyres left left on the bloody car park to teach her a lesson for making me go there. And But my ex-wife got the ultimate revenge because um, we went inside and she duly bought a 12-seater dining table and chairs that cost... I can't remember if it was 5,000 or 1146 million T pounds. And it was duly delivered in about eight and a half months. And here we are in Matlock. Matlock, I am in you. Comment if that was yours. And we're going under the railway line and the little jaunt from Matlock to Matlock Bath is one of my favourite little three minute wonders. And we are now heading towards Matlock Bath or Little Switzerland as it's sometimes known. 
and I have a big personal connection with Matlock Bath. I have lived here twice. Although once was a fantasy life, the other was real. But both times it didn't end well. Now the first time I lived here was with Bernard. Bernard was the first person I dated after after my divorce, bless her. Uh, and we had a funny sort of, well, I can't really call it a relationship, a, a thing. We still have a funny sort of a thing. And I invented a fantasy life for us because we both love my life bath. And we used to message each other with details of this fantasy life. Uh, we lived in um, a little cottage up on a lane up to the right, a little bit up ahead. Can you see the cable cars there? That's the heights of Abraham. And then all of a sudden in our fantasy life, completely out of the blue, uh, I apparently had an affair with one of my friends in Malta. I was spending a lot of time in Malta at that point. Uh, and I got her pregnant and Bernard topped herself by jumping off the balcony of the upper story of our cottage. Now, I do stress this was a fantasy life that didn't happen really, but there you go, that's kind of indicative of the kind of luck that I have that even in my fantasy life I end up getting a random chum pregnant and my missus leaps off the balcony of our dream home. Hey ho. The second time I lived here was with Boo. And I'll show you. Well, no, maybe I won't show you. That would be indiscreet. Well, we're going to be driving past. I can point it out. Let's talk. And this bridge on the left was christened by me the Bridge of Many Whittles because when we were house hunting here and planning to move here um, I said that I would make a nightly practice of piddling off that bridge on the way back from the pub. I never did, of course. Fish and chip capital of the world. Every other building is a fish and chip shop. And this, my loves, is Cromford, home of the best fish and chip shop in the world. Steeple Grange Light Railway and I've never been on it so if anybody fancies taking me on the Santa special and pretending to be my parent do comment below <laughs> 